how are you? Now then, I've got a couple of questions people have been asking me on different platforms as to um, why the returns process works and trying to like get explanations on what's going on. Basically, what happens is the corporations cannot, in English law, um, contract without your consent with the living man or the living woman. Now, what that means is in a contract is that you sit down with them, you discuss your service and their terms, how much you're going to pay, and then you'd hash it out, and then you'd have a contract drafted up, you'd sign it, they'd sign it. All right, that's a contract in English law, contract law. So they don't do that because it's not a contract. It's actually called an account, which is balancing, balancing the books. So because they're a corporation, that is actually against English law for them to do anything. All right, because they can't contract with you. So how it works is that when you're born on your birth certificate, there is a... A corporation created, an entity created at the same time as when you were born, as it were. So there's a paper you and a living you. All right, difficult for people to get your head around this, but it's true. Your informant on your birth certificate is tends to be your father. Informant, that's somebody who grasses you up, yeah? Uh, also on the bottom of the birth certificate, it actually states, if you go and pull it out, many people don't bother, they don't check, it actually states on there, this form is not to be used as identification purposes, yet they'll let you use that document to obtain a bank account, a driving license, your passport, yeah, <laughs> all to re reinforce or create and support the legal fiction because everything's then tied into this legal fiction right now you're a legal fiction now what does that mean so in black's law dictionary if you were to get a copy or try and look online black's law dictionary this is the black magic book that they use um it features words in there that you would find in the english language however because their language is legalese legal terms legalese right it's a separate language and they have different meanings different definitions for the same words for instance um person uh, a person is uh, a body corporate or incorporate i think it is either way incorporate corporate see can't you see where i'm going with this they're creating a corporation that's a person persona personus personality person you are a person to these people all right i think this is roman law i think when they created this um and off the back of that because you are then classed as a corporation if you use your legal fiction title your name first name surname yeah in block capitals that's a that's a corporation because you're dead dead legal fiction the evidence in that statement lies on your gravestone and your birth certificate because when they put your name on a gravestone and on your birth certificate it's in capitals capital letters now then etymology <laughs> etymology of the word capital means to cut it off all right capital cap cap capstone cap it off stop it cut it off so anything that's written in capitals is not in English. English is lowercase. So, I. Now you might be able to see where I'm going with this one. I is a stick with a dot. Right? That's to represent the man or the woman. The stick. Stick man with the woman with the head. Yeah? The body and the head. Now what happens when you capital? Capital. Phew, you cut cut it off so you're just left with the body have you lost your mind yet you're losing your head these <laughs> these are all phrases that we use we don't comprehend the meaning right so to capital means to cut it off so they capitalize the lowercase yeah lowercase letter and they take your life because you cut the head off and that's how they function 
extra proof of this is the word corporation. Break the word down. Corp, oration, orate, oration. Get a dictionary out. Google it. Orate. What do you do? What do you do when you orate? Speak. You speak. Orate. Corp. Corpse. You're dead. Speak to the dead. Because in English law, don't forget, they cannot address and contract with the living, which is you. Yeah? Living the body. But they can, obviously, corp they can contract with the corporation. Corporation to corporation. They're doing business. <laughs> it's such a scam. It's such a scam. And it's basic stuff that we just don't know. And I found out and I was like, I researched this for time. I've been at this for about two years. Dribs and drabs. Took three years even. Um, till I get to the point where I know what, know the basics. The basic stuff. And you just keep running it over and over and over in your head until it finally sinks in. And then you, you test this system and you look at documents and you think, hang on a bloody minute. It's right. Same if you use the word Mr. or Miss. These are titles. Yeah? It's a title that you've not been granted. So you're using it without permission so because of that and you're using it without permission you're then liable for its use <laughs> so, so sneaky so sneaky um so yeah do basically what that means is do not claim the name now what that means is if somebody comes at you with a document right and it says on it mr joe blogs or miss sam smith or whatever right that's the, they're addressing the dead legal fiction. So you, as the living, if you answer to that, i.e. when they address you, speak to you, address where you live, <laughs> speaking to you, yes, in your house, your house, that's where your brain lives, if they address you and you respond, right, that creates what's called joinder joinder is a legal term joinder puts the dead legal fiction the capital yeah the paper paperwork the birth certificate name with the living breathing man or woman joinder put two together two and two all right put two together and then it gives them technically permission to come after you for your debts your fines your charges anything else that that's related to it so this is why you use the return to sender process because what that means is when they're trying to address you speak to you you are taking their offer because that's what it is it's an offer it's an offer for you to pay right because there's no contract and if you pay that's through consent it's like somebody walking up to you on the street and saying, yeah, mate, give us 50 quid. And you hand it over. And then you walk off. And then you see a copper. And you say, hey, he's nicked 50 quid off me. He's nicked 50 quid off me. The copper goes and speaks to him and says, what, what happened? They give me 50 quid. Is it theft? No. Because you give it them. <laughs> it's a scam. It's an absolute scam. And it's really, really sad. And it's upsetting when you start to compute what's going on. But when you when you fully realise what's going on and you realise that you're being scammed, it's now your responsibility to not be scammed. Because nobody can do this for you. You are being scammed. I'm holding up a gun with no bullets in. You can see there's no bullets in. And I'm saying, give me 50 quid. In fact, give me, give me, give me this charge. You parts in the spot. 50 quid. Give me 50 quid. Give me 50 quid. You, you go... Get, get out me face, man. Get out me face. What are you doing wearing that thing in my face? Same thing. You know, you've got to use metaphors. I'm trying to go, like, get it into your head because it, it needs to go in. <laughs> it needs to go in here. You need help. And I'm here to help. Because <laughs> I needed help. And I didn't get any help. I had to go and troll all these different groups for weeks and weeks and weeks. And read and read and read and read and read. Um... And you just once you get to a certain level, you just got to tell people because it's just if if I don't share this information, what does that make me? 
That makes me an asshole. And I'm not an asshole. Contrary to popular belief. So that's the basic stuff about a corporation. And that's why you use this return to sender. Because they are trying to contract with you. And if you look on the other video that has the documentation that I tell you to pause the screen and screenshot it and then type it out and print it out and stick that over the window on the actual envelope, you'll be able to comprehend now why that's on there and you'll be able to put two and two together, right? Uh, and it will help you uh, adjust mentally as to what's been going on. Um, you know, the information that I give out will upset a few people. Because I'm challenging you mentally. You know, you've been conned all this time and it's upsetting. You know? So you'll take it you'll take it out on me. It's like a victim triangle. <laughs> Stockholm syndrome. So your abuser basically takes the money off you, and then the third party, myself, steps in, gives you evidence and information and says, Look, this is happening, you need to do this, you need to do this, and you can do that, and then they'll go away, and then you'll turn on me and attack me. Some people are like that, you know. It's because of your consciousness. It's the it's the lower end of the consciousness. The other side of that, another lower form of consciousness, is apathy. Apathy is oh well, oh well, well, well I just pay it. Well, you know, I don't want any trouble. That's fear as well. That's another one. It's another. That's another lower consciousness state, and that's where they keep you. Um, you know, it's really really bad. Guilt for paying all this time and not realizing it. Shame. That's another low consciousness vibe. It's it's all intermeshed, all these lower consciousness states. And uh, sadly, that's where they keep us um, until you start to realise and then you bypass that fear and then you move up to anger. Because right? then you're angry there and you're like, you, you know what I mean? You've had me over and I've paid and I've lost all that money. I could have spent that on feeding my kids, on going on an holiday, paying for my car insurance, paying for the flat tyre, paying for this, paying for that. Right? It's a lot of money. They've got they've got no right to take your money, but they're not taking it. You're giving it them freely through consent. So now I've told you, you can do something about it. And you can help yourself, and then you can help your friends, you can help your family. It's going to take some doing because this stuff has been indoctrinated into us generation after generation after generation. And they will turn around to you if you approach them with this information and they will say, oh, that's rubbish. You'll get in trouble. You'll do this. You'll do that. They don't want to know. They will not want to know. Because if you tell them and it sinks in, they need to action it. And they won't do through fear of reprisals, guilt, and shame from other people. Oh, I pay mine. I pay my TV license. I support paedophiles. I mean, I don't even know if they are. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that they actually are. Um, but yeah, I mean, don't you don't need a TV license. You just you don't even need to do it online or anything like that. You just cancel your cancel your direct debit or anything like that. Uh, and if it comes through the post, you just either ring them up and tell them that uh, you, you don't live there I don't really like doing that because that's technically it's fraud but hey the criminals you know what I mean fight fire with fire and all that jazz I mean I've never paid a TV license in my life um, because I don't want to because I know it's a scam fortunately um, same as your water by the way um, close your account with your water this is what i've done this is not advice it's not legal advice remember that it's personal opinion i close my account uh close the direct debit down got it in writing paid my final bill if there was anything outstanding you know for the time taking between the months as to when you pay or once every three quarters or whatever it is uh, i paid it all off so there's no debt yeah and and that was it then what will happen is you'll get a letter to the occupier for your water, your estimated water. If you've got a smart meter, get rid of it, man. Get rid of that thing. That's bad news. Um, yeah, another story. Get rid of it. Um, and then 
you can just chuck the uh, offers in the bin um, because it's actually a, a human right. And I'm going to do that word in another video. It's actually a human right that you are allowed water because it is a right and they cannot take a right away from you. Um, which means you don't pay for your water because it's a right. So they can't shut you off. Because they can't shut you off. They poison it. <laughs> they poison your water. And that's another story. <laughs> oh, everyone will be like this. Like, get off, get off. He's rubbish, he's rubbish, he's lying to me. Me, me poison. You're being poisoned. Fluorinated. It calcifies your pineal gland. It causes numerous issues. Um, I mean, heaven forbid you have a shat off, one of those little gun things that you uh, spray your bum with. Um, because if you're in, you're blasting that around your rectal area and through your mucous membranes and all this lot, this is where it gets interesting. But science. Um, yeah, you're going to get prostate cancer. Aren't you? Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? Um, yeah, I'm going to do some more vids. Have a look through my other vids. See what's on there. I've got my story on there, so you'll realise that I'm actually a real person. Oh, corporation. Real man. Um, and yeah, you'll, you'll benefit from this. Trust me.